Huh? It's another nerdy night as my roundtable joins me in the floating city of Sanctuary planning our next move as Crimson Raiders. I'll be your commando, Ben Riddick. Joining me at the round table is a man who thinks two guns are better than one, Chris Bunane. That's true. That's yeah. true. Fair. Some might call you a gunzerker, right? That's could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. And uh, every Vault Hunter group needs their claptrap unit. And ours has James Capelli. Clap. Trap. Clap trap. That's that's James. He's a clap trap. <laughs> and last but not least, he should probably tell you he's not an actual doctor. Doctor Mike DeMarco. I'm I'm not actually a doctor? No, 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 you're not. Oh. You are you do not have a medical license. I should stop that telling people that then. That yeah, explains, you should. That explains where all my money went. <laughs> yeah. Um we, we have a great freaking show planned for you tonight. Um, but before we get into the topics that everyone's brought, I thought we'd get into our active quests, which for those of you new to the show, active quests is where we talk about the games we're playing and the nerdy things that we are doing. James, it's been a long time since I've seen you on the show. Oh, it has. It, I, I've kind of missed you. I've missed you, being here. You've been fighting the Kim Jongs, oons and ills and such. Yeah, yeah best Korea. Best Korea. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> You know the the whole the whole shooting thing that happened, literally, literally like the week I left. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You yeah. just keep everything together. That's what clap traps do, man. <laughs> that is what clap traps do. Um, that and having no friends. Um, so, what have you been doing? Um, I have been spending a lot of time traveling, so I've been doing that much nerdy stuff. Uh, but now that I'm back, I've been back for about a week now. I have uh, I got Rocket League. Yeah. I joined the crap out of Rocket League. Good. Uh, I, I I like Rocket League. Oh, it's so much fun. Uh, the MLG Finals inspired me to actually like really try at the game. So trying to fly through the air and nail the ball at an angle into the goal. It's, I haven't done it yet, but I'm looking forward to like, You'll get, get there. there. Get Practice there. makes perfect. That's what yeah. they say, James. I was I was talking to my buddy about it. He's been playing like all like all the time on the computer. He's and he's right when he says it's a game you can really feel yourself progressing at. Absolutely. Just great. It makes uh, sense. Um, Let's see. So I did. I'm doing that. Um, I've been playing. I, I bought this game right before I left for my trip about two months ago. Uh, it's a Shin Megami Tensei game, which I'd never played one before. But it's a Devil Survivor two, so it's a tactical kind of game. It's really good. This is, this is Shin Megami Tensei is that's Persona, right? Yes, it is. Same yeah. same people. Yeah. Um, Love those I've, games. I've put about fifty hours into it. I beat it, and I'm going through the extra chapters that this got like re-released for the 3DS. Um, I'm enjoying yes. that a lot. Uh, it's actually it's the first game I've gotten uh, my girlfriend Anna to play. She really likes it, uh, so that's cool. Uh, and I finished um, Stephen King's The Stand, which awesome. is Sweet. a giant book. tome of a book. It's like that big. It took <laughs> that's me three a, that's months. That's a big book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was good. Um, there's a lot of controversy about the ending. People, a lot of people hate. It, a lot of people, some people really love it. I think it was good. It was nothing great. Let's help well, I mean, a little bit more, but. It's just, it's the ending the stand, of uh, the Stand Stephen King, right? Yeah, it's the end yeah. of Stephen yeah. King book. I yeah, saying. I mean. I'm not, so, I, I not feel like that, that's that's common for Stephen King books. It's like he writes and writes and writes, and then he's like, okay, I'm kind of bored of writing this. Let's end it. Yeah. It's like he knows where he wants to go with it, that he gets tired of getting there. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so yeah. now I'm going to start reading the Dark Tower series of his, which it's a series of books, so the ending hasn't happened yet. So I have, I've, I'm yet to be disappointed. That's that a great series. Yeah. So I just got to get People through the first book. I hear the first book is kind of tough because it's all like – it was originally released in like little segments in like uh, some sort of magazine yep. journal, so I just got to power through that, which it's not too long. So yeah. that's that's what yeah, that's what I've been doing. You know, I'm trying to get some gaming in before it's nursing school next week. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. Chris, how about you? What what have you been doing? What active quests are you embarking on? Um, today is the twenty fourth, so that means that TGT has landed. So today is the grand tournament uh, launched for Hearthstone. Oh, so are you in that? Okay. Uh, well, that's the new expansion for Hearthstone. So oh, everyone gotcha. is busting packs, opening up new cards, making decks. Uh, Spending real they, money the servers on cards are crashing because there's too many people playing, and it is fun. I do love I got, when too many people are playing games. Oh, it's just it was fun. Opened my first uh, my first fifty packs and got uh, two uh, two legendaries. One of them. Uh, golden, both ones I wanted. Freaking awesome! Golden. What's a gold? What's the difference between Maybe. regular and golden? It's like a foil. If you ever played Magic, 
Oh, what they start doing it's foil a holographic. <laughs> yeah. So like you know, so when you get something like um, Nexus Champion Sarad and he's golden, people have been wanting that card. You open it in your first packs and you're like, "Fuck you!" Woo! Can yeah, you sell it? It's nice. No, just yours. But you'd have to craft it or whatever. And, but uh, how many people got money. Charizard? Is the real question? Oh, that, right. that is the real yeah, question. Yeah. Gold, got <laughs> well, I got Chilma, which is the new Charizard, basically. Okay. So I got both. As of long the, as you uh, have Legendary Charizard, you're gonna yeah. win. So we've been. Ha- so I've been having fun with that. That's been my nerdy thing, and I think uh, I believe uh, it's now the number one Twitch stream today is is Hearthstone, and people at one opening point, always up people there, opening though. packs. That's Twitch. Yeah, stream literally all. there was. Uh, multiple the, the, the top like thirty streams in there today. <laughs> you had somebody with like forty thousand people watching him open packs, and then the next person had twenty five thousand, twenty thousand, fifteen thousand, just watching people open up booster packs. Yeah, Bubman in the chat is saying that reminds me, I need to open some packs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the day. So he just he, he leaves the stream. He's going to go open his packs and then come back and say, "Okay, this is what I got." Yeah, uh, let me know. Uh, Mike, how <laughs> I about you? I just got three messages yeah. saying I need to get <laughs> um, Since last week, not much. I have uh, I have some secret stuff that I can't talk about going on. Why would you? Um, because that's all I have going on. So that's all I'm going to say about Dude, it. Secret stuff is awesome. Secret stuff. I like secret stuff. Everyone know. will know eventually. Is just this is this like the that. secret stuff that we talked about, or is you, this secret you, stuff I don't even know about? You know about the secret stuff. I like secret stuff. Yes. I'm excited about the it's secret stuff. It's very exciting. You, as the listener of this show, should be excited about the secret stuff, too. Woo! Excitement. Oh, cool. Secret stuff. Just saying. Secret <clears throat> stuff is cool. Um, aside from that... But let me tell you real fast. Mike, yeah. Keep it secret. Oh, it's... Keep it safe. <laughs> it's totally safe. <laughs> it is need um, to no basis. Um... Besides that, uh, I have an interview at GameStop on Friday. Woo-hoo. So there's that's something that which, we'll be spending some time. Um, you sound so excited. You're like, that's uh, something. James, which you know I'm in one? Maryland, right? <laughs> no. I moved. <laughs> <laughs> what? James, when? Learning uh, all of these about things on the show. So when I, moved, when I went to Korea, of course. Pretty much, yeah. I did not. I, okay, I, we got to talk. I, we, gotta, we have a little powwow about this later. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I moved right outside of DC. I think I think we'll we'll, we'll we can we can dis- discuss this later though. Let's, oh, let's yeah. keep the talk to games. Sorry. Games. Games. So that's that, is that, is that all you had to? Yeah, I've, I haven't okay. really played anything. I've been watching so, Microsoft Five. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. Wait, I thought that comes out tomorrow. Came out today. It comes out on the first. Oh. But the embargo ended last night. Right. So that's right. all the people, reviewers, and live streams are going right now. Gotcha. Wait, live streams? See, yeah. I don't know how I feel about reviewing games like that before they're out. But like, hmm, interesting. Greg Miller's been playing. He played, like, for two weeks straight. <laughs> or he's still playing, and then he puts yeah. up a stream every day. He puts up some of it every each day. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of debating. I've never played a Metal Gear Solid game. Yeah. So I've, I've been kind of wanting to get the, the HD collection on the Vita and just play mm-hmm. through. All of those games. Well, geez, don't do it on the Vita because the Vita one's only two and three. Yeah. The, yeah. I th- I thought it was no Metal the... Gear, Metal Gear Two. Nope. I'll break it down for you right now. Okay. There on PS3, <laughs> there's the Metal Gear Legacy Collection, mm-hmm. and that's Metal Gear, Metal Gear Two, Metal Gear Solid, VR Missions, MGS Two, and MGS Three, and Four. But then there's the mm-hmm. HD Collection, Jeez. which on PS3 is just. Um, two, three, and Peace Walker, and then it's also on Vita, but they don't have Peace Walker on Vita because it was on PSP. So they, it's just two and three on Vita. I was pretty sure that I saw Peace Walker. No, as one you of the can ones download. On um, Peace Walker is, but that's not the old Metal Gears or Metal Gear Solid One or anything. Hmm. Oh no, no, okay, okay, See, I understand what you're saying. That's you can just too many for Vita, so they didn't release it as part of the collection. There is a well, then maybe maybe I need help. Games. Yeah. Viewers, listeners, tell me which Metal Gear games I need to play, and I'll work one, on that. One and two. Number one. One and two. Yes. Okay. And number two. Yeah. MGM, um, after that, some you need to. Gear. You have to play Solid Three if you want to play Solid Five. That's probably true, but also not. Well, really. Solid Five. Solid Five follows Big Boss. How do you it not does, play the game about Big Boss? 
Yeah, but they they've they have said that you can play just Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, you 5. can jump straight in, straight into it. But if you want, to, like, if you're looking to play a Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid game before you play, people's like most people say that either yeah, one Metal Gear Solid one, one or Metal Gear five. Solid three are the best ones. All right. Definitely yeah. not two. I'll tell you that much. Well, let one me tell you the games I have been playing, as opposed to just the games that I, I'm wanting to play. Um, over the last week, I've been playing a lot of Borderlands. Um, I've, I've been going back through Borderlands 2, and I just... I forgot how much I really enjoy that game as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll be talking more about Borderlands later on in the show, because of one of our other topics. But it's, it's such a fun game. Um, and then I also started Rocket League for the first time two nights ago, um, which is a freaking phenomenal game. I, I'm really, really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I can't wait to play more, and I can't wait to be better. And like James was saying, it's like you can definitely see yourself start to get better at it. Like at, at the beginning of the game, first off... I was playing with one of the one of the guys that usually watches the show, Recruit. If if you're listening, mm -hmm. shout out to him. Um, worst teacher ever. <laughs> 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 we're we're playing two v two, and he's like, "Okay, so this is what you do. If you hit X, you can jump." I'm like, "Okay," and then we finish the first game, and I'm seeing like people boosting all over the place, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you can boost too." <laughs> I'm like, "Thanks," and then the game ends. And uh, he, he mentions, oh, man, I got that last goal because I, I, like, power slid into it. And I'm like, what? He's like, oh, yeah, you can also power slide. I'm like, dude. And then he was just like, go play the tutorial because I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell you everything. Yeah. Um, so that Which was fun. you probably should have just done it in the first place. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to get right into playing a game. Sure. We tried to play the Black Ops 3 beta, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working with... For us to play together weird um so bummer mm -hmm. um but that's that's been pretty much it uh otherwise it's been really busy planning everything um <clears throat> so why don't we why don't we just jump into our oh, our first before topic. we do before we do there's one thing i want to bring up one thing I've, i have done over these past several months that past couple of months that i think you would appreciate um so back earlier this year on netflix they released all of red versus blue mm. So I went back through and I watched every. I watched all of Red versus Blue. Um, Did they put up all of it? I thought it was like the first. No, no, five they're, they're still. No, it's there's every. It's everything. It's everything except for the season they're currently on right now. So all the way up to season twelve. They must have updated yeah. then. I remember when I first yeah, looked, no, no, it was no, it only just update. the original Blood Gold Chronicles. Mm -hmm. So it, like, it actually got pretty good. Like I, mean, I can, I real, I know why I stopped watching. Is there's a lot of plot density, and. And such like as like it, it's so poorly paced for a weekly episode. And it's like I can't remember all these characters who you know. It's like when I started doing the mercenary stories, I was just like, who are these? What's going on? I don't know who this is. Yeah. Uh, but now that I can sit down and, like watch it like all the seasons all the way through. Yeah. It's really when you can watch good. things back to back, you don't lose it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's like trying yeah, it's to really uh, pick up the. If you ever read the um, Wheel of Time books. No. Uh, and every time you pretty much the reason the new I one, didn't. You pick up a Wheel of Time book and be like, "Who in the name of God is that again? And why is this person here?" So yeah. you'd have to go back and yeah, way too there's many plot threads. There's a book series I'm reading through right now, I'm waiting for the next one, and the author is very good at recapping things as you go through the next book. So, That's which is good. good. Anyway, Ben wanted to move on. I just wanted to talk about it. Yes, right. yes, I do want to move on. Um, Mike, yeah, you you have you have a pretty great topic planned for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes i do yes i do <laughs> why yes thank you so um we see you know i guess i could start it with uh mighty number no. nine is the the famous you know kickstarter that happened and mm -hmm. that's came out of uh Inof inofuna getting basically kicked out of capcom inofuna is the uh creator and overlord of Mega Man, mm -hmm. and since inofuna has left <laughs> um we've gotten Jeez, when, when did he actually leave? Was it before X8, X7, X8? I think uh, it was before X7. So then, at, since then, we've gotten like X7, X8, 9, 10. Is that when the XRPG came out? Yes, yeah. that was after 8. Mm -hmm. um, so, actually. 
Battle Network's gone on for 12 games and it's still going. Yeah, it's it's really long. I think it's like seven games, and then after like the second or third one, they started doing the Pokemon thing where there's like multiple colors of each one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's um, yeah. So anyway, basically, Mega Man is one prime example, but I want to talk about just general IPs like game franchises that have kind of gone off the deep end and just misdirected over time. <laughs> Um, okay, I mean, I think I think the, the best place to start with the topic of mistreated IPs is, let's ask the question of, are there games that you guys think should just stop in general? Like, let's, let's stop making this game um, in <laughs> sports, particular. Sports and games. Do s- sports games? Most of them. Yeah, so I, I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, I understand why they do it. Sure. Rosters update and all that, and you know, each Rosters year update, they... people buy it. So why not keep buying, making this? That's the fact. That's the thing is that they sell. That's the that's the yeah. biggest problem with it is that it sells, so they keep doing it. <laughs> Which I guess makes it not actually a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, not for them. <laughs> well, yeah, not, it's just exactly a for us. Okay. So, so when you look at that though, if you look at just sports games. So, which sports games are we talking about? Because there are certain ones that did die. Because their quality was horrible. And then there are ones... Like what? Like every single other version of any NFL game other than like Madden? That's because they bought out rights to... Yeah, but they stopped. Their quality started to decline. Well, no, that's not the only reason, though. Um, The EA bought all of the rights to the team and players. Yeah. Um... For Madden, so none of the other football games could actually use real team, uh, real teams or players in the NFL. Right. Which means you have to get creative, and like when sports get creative um, and try to make new things, it sometimes can work out pretty well. But you don't see that often happening with sports games because people don't want new quirky things with their sports games that often. They want the real thing. Unless you put yeah. Mario on the cover, who cares? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd play Mario mm. NFL. Um, but I think, like, as far as sports games go, there's a very easy solution. It's not like, like, they have a great engine that's going into these sports games, but it's not like the engine updates that much each year. So what I would think is, like, create a new Madden every five years and put out on the network, like, a $30, $40 roster update every year. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that would, yeah, that would be great. It's coming. It'll come eventually. They'll they'll yeah. they'll make a platform I mean, for each like branch of sport, you know, and oh, then I mean, that'll be a thing that you buy, and then it'll update each year <clears throat> for a cost, and we'll see. it'll be I like mean, that for the entire we'll, we'll see. generation. The the biggest thing right now, like if we're talking about games that need to stop, um, you know, I I actually just had somebody uh <laughs> comment to me. Um, they said, tell them to stop making WoW. <laughs> and <Yeah. that's>, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You know, can, can we beat a dead horse? It, there are millions of people who play it. It's not as many as play every single one of those sports games every or year to buy them. Or, or League of Legends. Yep. Which is, it's, it's, so it's, kind of, it, it's kind of the modern day WoW right now, is League of Legends. Yeah. That's why so there's, a, there's a lot of games that. <laughs> That are like as that. far but as in popularity, terms of a mistreated IP, popularity, which is like, I think the, the the topic was mistreated IPs. So yeah. to go back to that, um, sports games I can see being mistreated, um, although they're not really because the IPs are strong and they're yeah. producing every year at a high yeah. quality, so they're not really being mistreated. Yeah. Mistreated not... would be something like Sonic. Yeah. Well, I mean, what the, so you know, Madden or, is something. It's not mistreating the IP; it's mistreating the people buying it because they're making fun, it. Every but it's year. not the IP's fault, right? You know? Exactly. I, they, I they're doing what you. they're doing and making tons of money. And leave them to yep. it. As long as people buy it, people buy it. You know what? What franchise I would say was going off the deep end, but they brought it back. Tomb Raider. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Tomb, Tomb Raider, Raider sucked. Turned uh, around. Like, like, well, it was like four or five, and then they made Each, just rebooted. Every and now successive awesome. game after two just kept just trudging along Deep and keep getting worse. Which and typically worse. Is, is what happens. Yeah. Look at Uncharted yeah. 3. 
Oh <laughs> my god. James, you can drop fire. That <laughs> Uncharted <laughs> 3 <laughs> is like, easily <laughs> the best no, of it is the not. three Uncharted it is the worst games. One. It is That's absolutely insane, like James. A, it's the most beautiful of the games. Oh man, what did B, I do? It has it the most beautiful best just because like, relationship <laughs> and growth between the characters <laughs> of Drake and Elena. And, and see, his, they and almost killed the character in that game. It was so good. Uh, it's, the, it's the best Uncharted game until four comes out. <laughs> until well, four obviously, comes out. four is going to be awesome. My best friend uh, be awesome. just starts working at Naughty Dog tomorrow. Oh, what? Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm gonna go visit him. I hope I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him to get a tour of the Naughty Dog office. Woot. I applied yeah. to Naughty Dog. <laughs> are, are you are you gonna bring your best friend Ben James? He moved to California. Um, it's yeah, down know. near it's down near LA, so you have to take a little trip. I, I, I yeah, know sure. where Santa Monica Naughty Dog is. Yeah. I'll oh, go sure. there. Yeah. I will go there, James. All right, I'll let you know when I'm going out there. <clears throat> good, good. I mean, better. didn't we just get an apology, though, from Sega about the fact that they mistreated, like, their entire stable of games? Yeah, yeah. but that was, like, 10 years too late. 15 years too late. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, but we're, that's what we're talking about. Honestly, Metal Gear, we were just talking about. So what, know, other, they, they, Metal Gear. What, other, what other IPs from Sonic have they mistreated? It's your, yeah, from Sega from, have they from mistreated? Sega? No, Sega, Sega as a whole said that they've mistreated yeah. like their entire game stable. But, but they what actually else, like, I think, No, no, I think they specifically outed Sonic. Yeah, they did on yes. that one. Yeah, like I, I don't think they. Well, I don't think it was a blanket <laughs> statement. I think it you, was. <laughs> do you guys know about Sonic Boom? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my god! Best game ever made, Jim. <laughs> oh. Best game ever made. Game watch, of the year. I watch every ga- year. I watch Game Grumps. And yeah. that that whole the Game Grumps playthrough of Sonic Ridiculous. Boom was, was such a treat. So oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic Boom is clearly the best Sonic game ever since uh, Sonic and the Black Knight and Sonic, Sonic Unleashed. <laughs> Sonic 06. Uh, Sonic uh, Colors. Wasn't there Sonic Golf? Wouldn't surprise. I don't remember. And then, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many. There's a Sonic sports game. I don't, I don't remember now. You know what's surprising so, uh, is that they don't make a Sonic racing game. Like that they just did. feels like that just makes sense. That there feels like an auto there, there's a Sega and they don't racing. do it okay. ever. Yeah, there is a uh, Sega racing game. Okay, correct. Um, yeah. It was not good. Other, other. You know, th- th- I wouldn't say that this IP is abused, but I would like it to stop. Is the Call of Duty IP? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I and Battlefield. I would agree with you, but also to Chris's to Chris's. It makes money. About the, yeah, exactly. And people are are playing them. They're enjoying them. They, you know, they, I just played, I actually just played in the beta all weekend and we were talking, me and Ben were actually talking about that, uh, about Battlefield. And it's like, it seems decent. Uh, It's very similar to the last game. They've updated some stuff. Um, That's that's always the same. You can use that description ever since uh, after um, Call of Duty 2. Well, no, 4. But they need to go Uh, back. If they're going to do it, the, the point is, again, not necessarily mistreating because they're making quality games that sell. I yeah. think the mistreatment would be more games like, which in Mega Man, where you've had them announced, canceled, announced, canceled. Like yeah. the entire IP has come come down to where if somebody even released a Mega Man game right now, you might be hesitant to play it just because you're kind of like going, eh, really? Yeah. At this point? Yeah. Well, um, a new Mega Man game's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, Mega Man Legacy. Legacy Collection. Yeah. Legacy Collection. What? But is that is that a new game or is that? No. <laughs> it's no, a re-release it's... of Mega Man One through Six. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's not a yeah. a new game. But they're trying they're trying to get people excited again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they can announce Legends Three. So again. They can destroy <laughs> our <laughs> dreams once again. Oh my gosh, Legends Three. <laughs> Legend, poor... Legends is so, one of my favorite. Series, my poor heart. My poor they heart. Just ran into the ground. Yeah, it was so good. I'm I'm curious to think. I mean, do you think Inafune's uh, what is it? Mighty Number no. Nine. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Do you think that's going to be significantly? Do you think that's going to be great? <sighs> I, um, I think it's going to be hailed as great. I think it's going to get those reviews. I think my personal opinion. I'll think it's good. Like I, it, he he started the project. I mean, because I backed it before it caught on wind. Like somebody on Reddit posted it, and I you know saw it. it like James, just, the Mighty uh, Number no. Nine hipster. No, it's not. Yeah. My... I did it before it was. <laughs> I, the reason I say I, I caught it early is the first video he made about look at this thing I want to do, 
it was like it was very humbling of himself like look this is like i've always been passionate about this i've always loved the mega man franchise this is uh, this is gonna be my baby of a game that that's kind of an homage to these are the games i helped make that i love so much and then now you look at it and it's like it's exploded so much and they've got so much money from the kickstarter that they it's just did another it, kickstarter it, it feels like yeah it feels like they lost a lot of the heart that the first mm-hmm. video gave it's just like so I'm, I'm worried they're going to pander a lot to what a lot of the masses want and less so to what Inofune feels the game should be. The the dream, the what the essence of what Mega Man yeah. was. Like, I'm so, still I really still think, excited for it, yeah, but, I think, but I'm great. worried now Now that like it's already a kind of like a year later than it's supposed to be, and then they've delayed it again, so it's not coming yeah. out until next year. That's not, it's not a good sign like, yeah. That, yeah. They're, that they're having issues finishing the game. Is is kind of leaving me with a a sadness. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Absolutely. It'll be it'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, I do want to throw in my my thought of a mistreated IP, um, just for the sheer inconsistency. Like this, I, I feel like this IP has had some amazing, awesome games, and then some shit, and then some. All right, this was okay to some more shit, to some awesome games. <laughs> okay. um, and it's it's just so inconsistent. It it drives me nuts. And that's that's Assassin's Creed. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. Um, like, <clears throat> I think that is a great example of something that's mistreated because just because it's never the same game. Like, I, 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 I know There's I'm no in a minority for... Exactly. I, I know I'm in a minority for enjoying one a lot. I know that there were a lot of things wrong with one, but I still mm-hmm. enjoyed playing the game. Um, Same. Same. Two was was great. Yep. Um, yep. Brotherhood was where it, where it peaked, in my opinion. I, yep. I, I liked two more than I liked Brotherhood. Yeah. Um, I liked Re- Brotherhood and Revelations a lot. I, I I loved Revelations. I liked being able to see Altair again yeah, and no. SEO. The entire Ezio trilogy was like fantastic. Like, Absolutely, it was a high point of the whole series. And then they did Assassin's Creed Three. They made a character that I just couldn't give two shits about. Nobody could. <laughs> um, and they they just did not make the game interesting. Like before Assassin's Creed Three, I platinumed every Assassin's Creed game. I went and I found every goddamn feather, every <laughs> you know stupid like passage. I opened every chest. I, I did all of that because I loved those games so much and I wanted to just play them as much as I possibly could. And then 3 came and I, I played through like half of it and I was like, I, I don't care about this. And I stopped playing it for a little while and then I'm like, I really just want to beat the game. So I just yeah. powered through, beat the game, and that was that. And then Black Flag came out and I would say, I would, other than the fact that the character was not my, my favorite character... I enjoyed the gameplay the most in Black Flag. Yeah. Um, like, I, I loved I loved finding the sea shanties. I loved, you know, being on my ship and, and you know, fighting. I loved, I loved all the things that they added. Um, and that got me, like, really, really hyped for Unity. And then Unity came out. Uh, they gave me, again, another character that I, I could give two shits about. And I think I've played through like five chapters of that game and I just haven't picked it up since. Yeah, I, I uninstalled it from my PlayStation. I yeah, couldn't I, take it. I just recently reinstalled it, hoping no. that I would just go through and beat it. I haven't um, touched it. And it's like now now I'm looking at uh what's the next one coming out again? What's it called? Uh Syndicate. Syndicate. That one looks good again. But it's like I'm I'm terrified to play I I I mean, fact of the matter is, I'm probably going to get it just because I, I, I you love the franchise. I love yeah. the franchise. I love the idea of the franchise. I think yeah. of Assassin's Creed almost the opposite of like the Call of Duty thing, where mm-hmm. Call of Duty is being mistreated artistically, and I yes. feel like I feel like Assassin's Creed is the other way. What what amazes me about Assassin's Creed and always has since like since two came around and and two and Brotherhood and Revelations was that. They were able to turn around a game in a year, well, and every they have time two... it was solid. Yeah, every time they... it was a solid game. Yeah. 
Well, they, okay, had, that's they had true. two separate they studios more tech, actually working. They have more on technical it. issues with the, the ones that people didn't like. It's simply because you did not latch on to the main character properly. Typically, yeah. yeah. And and then there were some technical issues. Like the one, the, the Native American, <clears throat> which, listen, I loved it. I loved the setting. But the setting my, was great. One, it had a lot do of not make too. your main character not the main character for a third of the playthrough. Yeah. And then do not just put mindlessly, like, there's a certain amount of, like, tasking that you have to do in a lot of games, and I get that. But, dear God, it just bogged you down with the constant. There was nothing fun about it. It yeah, was, oh, like... I'm dealing with petty squabbles all the time. And it, it no. wasn't fun. No. So, but they, they, I think they did. I agree with the being mistreated as an IP, one hundred percent. I felt like three was technically the worst one too. Like, two, like all the yeah. one and two all had technical issues where things would pop into existence and stuff. And you usually, you accept that with that sort of ridiculously scoped game. Mm -hmm. But three was the first time where I would get stuck in stuff and have to reset and lose progress. Like that was the yeah. first time that ever happened. Yeah. Uh, same. Yeah, that makes same sense. Kind of thing. Another but, another uh, franchise. If I mean, if we're done about Assassin's Creed, that's going to change. Yeah, change game. no, that's fine. I, um, I have nothing more to say. I was going to say uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, but we'll see what's going to happen with fifteen. Um, but again, like I would, I would never would have thought that Final Fantasy would become one of those. Oh, we're big in like a big MMO sort of thing, you know, which is what fourteen is. Well, or yeah, they basically 13, made 13, 2, and 13, 3, which yeah, and I know a lot of people love those games, but I think like pe the people who tend to like those games are the younger generation who didn't grow up with 6 to 10. Uh -huh. You know, it's almost hard uh, to call Final Fantasy a single IP because it's like they mistreat, they kind of mistreat 7 a little bit, they really mistreated 13, but then the ones in the middle are kind of just what they are, what they are. They're not horrible. Like no, ten no. was really good. Um, nah, nine, really, was, nine was nine was great. nine's my favorite. I like, like up, ten. Up those, I like, like from nine eight to eight to twelve. I think nine's the best one, in my opinion. Is that the one with the uh, school? No, that's type zero. That's type zero. No, 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 no. no. The one with oh, that's, the that's like, eight. You're thinking oh, about that's eight. eight with Balam, that's eight. Yeah. Which is the one with the like VV and the mage and all that's that stuff? Nine. Is that nine? Yeah. yeah, that's the best. Yeah, that's the best one. Just mentally getting my head right on that one. Sure. So I'm I'm looking forward to 15. There's a lot that can go wrong with it, but if they do it right, there's a lot that can go very very well. Yeah, 15 could either kill Final Fantasy or bring the whole like the whole IP back up to prominence. There's a lot riding on 15. They announced 16 last year at E3, didn't they? No. I'm pretty sure that 16 got announced. No. I, I no, promise. I don't, I don't there's no 16 yet. They changed. Up, they changed Storm, that. Right? To, they changed thirteen verses to fifteen. Right. They announced. They just announced FF Seven remake. World of Final Fantasy is coming out, and um, and then they announced. They also announced a new studio that's doing a new project. But there's no okay. sixteen yet. Have you guys played the RPG, the Final Fantasy RPG, or not? They're all RPGs. No. What? The Final Fantasy, Final, Fantasy Final Fantasy RPG, Fantasy not RPG. The MMO. Sorry, the MMO. Oh, fourteen. Uh, 14? No, I've not played it. I yeah, played yeah. the beta and when the first version. I haven't played in Robin Reborn. Okay. No, Cynthia, I've played I'm dancing Realm... because I have absolutely nothing to add. Totally to out of I, I, I played, I played sure. Realm Reborn. It's, it's actually very good as a... I've heard it's a lot better than it started. And I actually liked it when it started. But a lot of people complained it was too difficult and stuff. So, I mean, to each his own, I guess. But I've heard they've improved a lot since they redid it. Yeah, it's, it's much better than it was. Yeah, are you ready to move on, Ben? <laughs> I'm ready to move on. I, as soon as you started talking about Final Fantasy, it's like I'm, I'm completely out of it because, you know, it's it, it's it's uh it's not, in my wheelhouse of games that I have played. That's fair. Um, because you know they they just don't, they don't capture me the same way they capture other people. I understand that people like them, but it's not for me. Why don't we move on to our our next topic though? Yes. Um, this is actually a topic I'm, I'm pretty darn excited to talk about. Um, Chris, this is your yep. topic. Okay. Go ahead. Tell me about your topic. Are you ready for football? <laughs> we already kind of talked about Madden, but, um, <clears throat> you know, honestly, um, I was, um, flipping through stuff and 
saw an article for the new Madden movie, and I was like, I don't know what this is, but that seems interesting. So I clicked it, and I watched this magical five minutes of insanity. And um, if you haven't seen the Madden, the, the new 2016 Madden movie, oh, uh, it's five minutes long. Um, they've been kind of ramping up to this over the last couple of years with commercial, where they're getting bigger and a little bit crazier every year. And it's finally just like the ultimate, what in the name of God did they actually just do? <laughs> did I just And watch? it is awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you, uh, well, I, I've shown it to a whole bunch of people and I had a whole bunch of different, different reactions, but I'd love to hear what you guys thought about it. So let me, let me first tell you about how I came across the trailer. <laughs> um, because... You know, you, you told me that this was the topic that you wanted to bring, and I'm like, God damn it! I'm gonna have to watch a mat. I'm gonna have to watch a trailer for a game I don't give, I, I don't care about. Um, and uh, Lee, I, I got home from work like yesterday or the or the day before. I don't remember which. And um, Lee Lee really wanted to play Viva Pinata, um, which you know, longtime listeners of the show understand that you know that's that's what Lee wants to do now. Is play Viva Pinata, tend to her garden <laughs> a lot. So I, I turn on, I turn on my Xbox One, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of the new period where uh, there are some new games with gold. So I went to look at that, and then right below the games with gold thing, I saw this, you know, watch the Madden, the Madden trailer, and I just see this giant T Rex <laughs> as the picture. And I'm like, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm like Lee. Can we watch this trailer real fast? And uh, you know, at, at first, you know, she she w wasn't really wanting to watch it, but I I just started playing it, and all of a sudden, Dave how Frank you, goes how on could the you look away? And Colin Kaepernick, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> um, and I I have to say, if if there's an actual movie with this, I want to see it. Yeah, but because it was, I just, mean, it made my night. Mm -hmm. so great i'm so interested to see if this is going to boost sales for madden how how could it how could it it literally has nothing to do with the game whatsoever i want you like maybe I want you to think maybe about the target audience gameplay in that i want you to think about the target audience that they are trying to reach out to with these madden games the target audience yeah. that cares about this commercial is already buying the game like yeah. they're not reaching anyone new i mean maybe probably not but you know, who knows I think uh, it's still the, be interesting to see. Just like, watching imagine, that trailer. Imagine if, though. Imagine if it does boost sales like twenty percent. <sighs> I well, don't know if I could live with understand. Myself. Like I said, they've been ramping the commercials up every year yeah. because yeah, they are boosting sales. I I remember around this time last year, the previous Madden games commercial came out. I don't remember the commercial specifically, but it also became a topic on the show. Yeah, I, I brought that up. James it was Franco. so super super weird. Yeah, Franco, and it had um, uh, the comedian. I remember. <laughs> I remember. I was like, with them. Watch this. "This is really funny," and I got you to sit down and watch it. And I remember the look on your face. You were just like, "The fuck did I just watch? <laughs> the, the fuck Why did, did I, I watch it?" <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I feel like my reaction to this video. Well, it's. I, I feel like, like the trailer funny. was a direct response to like Kung Fury. Like that's what it felt like, and it was impressively yes. done. Like it was shot well. It looked good. The effects yeah. were mm -hmm. pretty good, but it definitely had that Kung, Kung Fury feel to it. It did. That's, that's yeah. the humor that's and, and, modern day comedy. Yeah. So, Every person this? that I've shown it to started laughing at the exact same moment, which is just the the karate chop. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Going, <laughs> going, <laughs> going. And everyone kind of looks at you like, is, is it really keeping going? And then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah. Perfect. No, it's great. It was it was a great commercial, um, but I, I and I have to agree with the general consensus of the the roundtable. I don't think it'll boost sales. Well, okay, um, it's not just about that though. What I wanted to talk about the reason I love that, and no, no, I understand commercials are to boost sales. Is yeah. if you look at that commercial, it's this. It's been ramping up. Have you seen the commercials for Destiny? What they do with that, where it's these guys talking to each other and it's amped up, super excited, and then there's goofy stuff in it, but they're using just in-game stuff. Um, everything 
the whole marketing style of video games is kind of changing towards that. There's there's a there's a trend to go with the more you know tongue and cheek humor, more just more and more and more, and it's ramping up. And I think this is kind of the the escalation of it. Yeah, um, I mean, if you see the actual commercials for Madden, it's not that long five minute thing. It's that it's pieces of that cut up with gameplay footage showing the action. They're doing absolutely. that with, mm. with Battlefield. Yeah, this is, this is definitely that. for the internet it's, and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, I think video game commercials have been getting so much better in general. I mean, like, one of one of my favorite more modern commercials is... Um, do you guys remember the PS4 commercial with the two guys singing Perfect Day? No. Yep. Um, Fake, where, yeah. where they're just like, it's such a oh, perfect. Oh wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that one. <clears throat> that, was, mm-hmm. that was like one of one of my favorite commercials for for a console since the banned Xbox original Xbox commercial. Yeah. You, do you guys remember the banned original Xbox commercial? No. Yes. So God, I can remember <laughs> times I watched that video. Essentially. It's a commercial. There's a bunch of people walking around a mall, and all of a sudden, this guy walks up to another guy, and he just he lifts his hand up like this. Sorry, audio listeners, and another guy, and the the other guy does the same thing. So you've got two guys just pointing finger guns at each other, and then it, it gets really tense in the mall, like everyone has stopped just to watch what's going on, and then all of a sudden, the guy goes bang, and the the other guy just falls down, and it becomes an entire gunfight in the mall with the finger guns. Mm-hmm. And it's like you see people like mime grenades and throw them, and then you see people mime the explosion. It's so fantastic. Um, I'm gonna see I, if you're if you're in the Twitch chat. I'm I'm about to post the link to the commercial in the Twitch chat, so you guys can can take a look, and I'll I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the show notes uh, for this week's episode as well. Um, but it. it I feel like that commercial, had it been done um, today, would not have been a banned commercial and it would have been very highly regarded. Well, it was banned because of the music they played during the commercial originally. Oh, was that the reason? I don't yeah. even remember what not music the, they played. Not the gun violence? I don't not think the gun be- violence. There were no guns. They were just using their fingers, man. There's it no violence matter. there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't get made today. Yeah. Yeah, that's true totally but it, it was it was such a great commercial and i loved it oh right, if we're gonna go back yeah. to old commercials i know my favorite all-time commercial and it it made me want the game definitely it, it got a sale it was um our favorite nintendo characters dressed up fighting each other in a field oh, of flowers yeah. oh yeah i remember <laughs> that one too the, the original super commercial. smash brothers commercial super was smash. the best video game commercial of all time because I remember, like, everyone, a lot of people remember the first time they heard about Super Smash Brothers, and you're like, you're kidding, right? You can yeah, like, Mario really fight, <laughs> fighting Samus Saran, and that sounds yeah. amazing. And Fox and Link, holy shit, I need to get this. So to see that on the TV, you'd be like, there's no way this is what I think it is. And they show the gameplay footage. It's like, but it was, oh. even, it was way more ridiculous because it was like, they're like, these giant goofy suits. You have yeah. a giant Donkey Kong, Yoshi, and Mario, and Pikachu, like, arm in arm, frolicking down a hillside. And then one of I think Yoshi trips or Pikachu trips Yoshi, and then they all just start fighting. Yeah, these big guys in huge costumes just start punching each other, and it's awesome. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. And then and the, you mus- guys, the music, the music in the chat. Too. Let me let me know what some of your favorite commercials are, um, so that, that that I can give you a shout out there. Um, but uh, no, I I agree. I loved that commercial. <clears throat> that was. I want to see a re- I want to see a return to that. <laughs> if we're going to talk about tongue tongue and cheek, <laughs> like dress everyone up in uh, these well, outrageous costumes. If we're, if we're talking about modern I mean, commercials, it's that's my what Madden was, though. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah. The, the 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 commercial that just happened is that commercial for Madden players because it but was your really, NFL though, because... players dressed up in goofy costumes, f- like fighting each doing, other, doing with everything stupid but playing football, football bazooka launchers. But That's it wasn't exactly a fighting game. Like. It was a it's a football game, and they're not doing anything to have to do with football, really. You know, but you know what I think. Uh, Chris might be onto something here because those commercials they're going to play during football games, um, and the people that just watch football games 
they don't necessarily play Madden or anything like that, might see the, this commercial and be like, oh my gosh, you know, Colin Kaepernick, this quarterback that I, that I really enjoy watching <laughs> that should really be a baseball player, not a football player, is in this commercial. <laughs> I, should, I should look at this game. Maybe I'd enjoy playing this game. Or this coach, who I don't remember because he's not a coach I, right, I right. know. Do people really think like that? <laughs> I, I think... I mean, I, I don't get it. <laughs> Mike, you just explained yourself thinking sort of like that that's for the saying, Super yeah. Smash Brothers commercial. But I'm not thinking what... like because like I don't <laughs> It's like you're seeing characters that you like so you want to play the game. But I'm not seeing These I'm seeing them I'm seeing them do something in the commercial that is that is never been done before. It's explaining what the game is. Having football players not act like football players and not have anything to do with football would not make me think I should go play this game. If anything, it's going to make you think that the game is closer to what the video is, and that's not what you're going to get when you go get modded. Mad yeah, but you're going to get what you're watching outside of the so, commercials during the football well, game. I disagree, though, because what that game showed, or what that that commercial shows, is kind of people having the, the fun bro with it. the bro ship of playing that game, like the the yep. competition of oh, you did this, we're going to settle this argument by playing a quick game of Madden. Exactly. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just I making know. it goofy. All I know is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. I'm going to get Madden, and it better come with a free T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, the and, see, and this is where you have the disconnect between the, the gamers that are... There, there's multiple types of gamers everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can see... The mental disconnect that you're having with the the branding of Madden versus, you know, Fable Four coming out or something like that, or it's one of the more fantasy oriented games. If you don't just don't get it, you just don't get it. But that's an entire population of gamers. That, that is a huge. That, there's a, a huge, huge population, population of, of gamers yeah. that is more. It's like they than, buy one game every year, and it's Madden. Well, they buy yeah. Battlefield. They they buy. Black Ops 3 is coming out. Madden's coming out. It's the same gamers that are buying both of those games. And, and that's, again, the, that's a huge part of the brand. And that's a huge it, part of gaming. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, think, I think it is absolutely just... It's catering to the bros yeah. out there. Um, it's still not a game I'm going to play. Because right. I, I, don't, I don't do sports games. Um, it's just, meh. It's, it's the game that I bought when I got my PlayStation 4 with it. Because okay. uh, it's a good benchmark for new systems, or this for systems true. in general. For graphics, for quality, for loading and all that stuff. It's a great game, and I played the last, last years with my PlayStation 4. Enjoyed the hell out of it. So. Yeah. I mean, I... I agree that now, the more that I've thought about this, as as you watch, you will have seen my opinion go from I don't think this is going to sell any new copies to you know what I could maybe actually see this selling some yeah some extra copies because you have the same game every year, which is what you guys are talking about. If you don't hype it up, if you don't make it exciting for people that are going to be buying it, I have last year's game right here, and uh-huh. they by the way they did have it where it was live updating all year long. With injuries, with stats, with changing defenses, changing coaches, it did actually do all of that. What's the purpose of buying the new game if you don't get me hyped up for the new game? Yeah. So there you um, go. And if, if nothing else, it tells everybody, "Hey, the new game is about to come out." If you didn't know when, it's like, "Oh, that's coming out soon. I should go get that." I, for- I forgot about it. Yeah, I should it's go nothing. pre-order that at my local GameStop. I feel like the biggest aspect is just trying to make that viral video to get it in front of as many people as possible. Like, that's really just the purpose. And it's going to work. And it's going to work, yeah. People are going to yeah. watch it if they don't care about the game or not, but that video is going to have tons of views. For yeah. example, okay. my wife watched it th- uh, and enjoyed every second of it. Yeah. My so, mother enjoyed that video and was dying yeah. laughing. And she does The last video game I watched her play was like Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> and <laughs> she watched that going, laughing her, the, her butt off the entire time. So. Oh, I accidentally, I, I skipped James's topic. 
I figured it would just go there. Good next. thing we can go back and do it. The show's not no, over. No, we can't. It's too late. We're not doing James's topic anymore. Now <sighs> I feel like the claptrap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, tell us what topic did you bring to the table today? Uh, well, it was not quite a week ago, but uh, a little bit more than that. That D twenty three. That. Uh, <laughs> they re- they announced that the new Star Wars Battlefront game will not have a single player mode. Boo! Uh, they're going to focus on making it an entire multiplayer experience. Um, and so that that is kind of my topic is, you know, a how do you guys feel about you no know, single player in Battlefront? Um, B is this a good or a bad thing for the game overall? And C is this a trend that more games should or shouldn't do? Um, as far as like games that it's like, well, Uncharted is clearly a single player. It's like that's what it's selling for, but it was it, it's had a single yeah. multiplayer since two. Or um, games like uh, you know should should at least Call of Duty or Battlefield games stop doing single player and just focus on making the multiplayer better. Uh, you know, so so we'll start with just do you think that making Battlefront multiplayer only is a good or a bad thing? So here here's my thing. I don't remember Battlefront actually having a very deep story to it to begin with. Right. Like, is is was that ever a thing? Like, did did the Battlefront story? No. have? I think it was always just like, oh, all right, you're gonna play from the original trilogy now. Uh, go fight on Endor. Yeah, yeah, it was just level to level. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't understand the can... the hubbub about this well, because okay, so the same. And yes, Sorry. I did just say the hubbub about this. Let's not talk this, about that anymore. <laughs> the same people that are making this are the people who were releasing all the Battlefield games, correct? Yes. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, the same it's on the dice um, engine. It's uh, Yeah, okay. Um, and they, they gave up doing the new Battlefield to do this. Okay if, from that. what I was reading, what I was doing a little research, that they actually oh. kind of gave up the... the, the the annual Price. Battlefield game? Yeah, well, they, they're still doing it. But another, it to a different another studio. company is doing yeah. it. Another studio is ah. doing it. And the studio that's been in this Battlefield mind, like mental, mental slog, putting out 7 billion Battlefields every year, um, is doing something different now. And I think that it shows in what they're doing. Because, again, look at Battlefield. Where's the single player? Where's the, the storyline? Well, no, Battle, 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 Battlefield does actually, actually have a storyline. And they're yes, but the last... No, but what I'm saying is, if you look at the last couple, they were just talking about the fact that the the next one is going to have limited story. Yeah. <laughs> like, the last, that, couple, you know, they, last couple story has been shit. Yeah, that's think, what I'm saying. The stories the last, aren't the last that good. good. One was uh, probably Bad Company 2. Bad too. Company 2? Yeah, Bad Company yeah. 2 was really good. Yeah. But then after that, eh? Yeah, but it, it's not a game that I play the single player for. Like, I, same thing well, with what I'm Battle- saying is that the mentality no, of that is that's... shifting over to this. I'm in absolutely terms of... agreeing. Okay, so yeah. you think it's a good move? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because and the thing is, I love the I I love Battlefront. I I very fondly remember James, you, Kenny, and I playing Battlefront. Battlefront um, two. Yeah. On on Xbox. Yeah. The original Xbox when. <laughs> Oh, no, no. That wasn't Kenny and I. It was you, me, and David. Yes. Um, I was like, I didn't know Kenny then. Um, And, I mean, it's like, we had never met, but you and I were playing so much Battlefront and Halo together. Yeah. And those games are just so much fun. And if them not putting in, like, a single player in it means that the multiplayer is going to be that much better, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But... If if the resources are not going towards making a better game, and they're going towards something else, um, like marketing or something like that, then I DLC. might be a little frustrated. Or DLC. It's like, no, no, no. Use your time to make the game better. I'd be okay you know, with do... the free DLC. Yeah. Probably not. Which... It's Activision. It, it's, it's, yeah, 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 no. And... Um, so I'm in the opposing camp, I guess. Um I generally stay away from all the multiplayer components of these games. 
Uh -huh. Simply because there's too many games to play, so I don't spend a bunch of time playing one game. So I'll go through the single player maybe once or even twice, and then I'll move on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I actually did spend some time in like Uncharted 3's multiplayer, and in that case, the multiplayer didn't start good, if you guys remember. Because yeah, a, no, different, a different studio did the multiplayer than the single player, and it felt completely yeah. different. You could tell. See, um, I, I would be a person that would never play an Uncharted multiplayer. <laughs> it's actually no, pretty good. It, it, it isn't bad. It got a lot but, better I mean, over time, too. They fixed it. So I think... Um, like, my counter example to what I just said is a game like The Last of Us That's had a fantastic story. Um, and, you know, as soon as they announced oh, we're going to have multiplayer in this. I'm like, why? Why are you going to have multiplayer in it? And then I played the multiplayer, and I'm like, oh my god. I am so glad this game had multiplayer in it. Yep. Because yep. it that was a completely new kind of gameplay. Or not, yep. not necessarily new kind of gameplay, but very different than any other multiplayer game that was out at the time. It's like... It's easily in my top five favorite multiplayer games. Yeah, and it was like it's another Us. great okay. thing about The Last of Us is that the multiplayer adds to the single player, and that it like it, it fits the world that you're in. Yeah, you know, it's not just like eight different uh, Nathan Drakes fighting a bunch of uh, so, Lazaroviches. <laughs> yeah. So like saying that, I th I don't think there's a reason why Battlefront shouldn't have a single player. But I would understand the focus being on multiplayer. So thinking yeah. thinking that way, they should be able to have a single player that is still based in the multiplayer maps and stuff. But they could create sort of a goal system. Like they already have hero characters; they're gonna have aerial battles and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why not be Luke on Hoth and like go destroy the ATAT, go protect these people in the base? Like they could create and string together a somewhat single player version of that game. That's Even if playable. it's just a loose one, but, yeah. But then, but then I don't. It's a, I don't know if it's necessarily. It's the quality the of that would drop. Probably, but if it's like tacked on. If if you are like being honest with yourself, you know, it's like Call of Duty has decent single player, but its purpose is the multiplayer, and that's what they really spend their time doing. You could do the same thing with Battlefront. Yeah, but really. Call of Duty. If you did, you see? Have you played uh, Advanced Warfare? No. The the storyline there. They didn't just like cobble it together. That was a huge storyline where they hired um, what's his name? Um, Kevin Spacey. House of Cards. Kevin Spacey was in the entire thing. I mean, it was yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. production. It oh, wasn't yeah, just not, like I'm not saying that together. they're bad, but they're they are definitely a backseat to the multiplayer. Multiplayer is where they get their money, and that's where they put their production value into. That's true. Yeah. Now they try and increase the production value by hiring people like Kevin Spacey and throwing them into the game, and that does right. increase production value. But it doesn't necessarily make the game better. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, just so everyone in the stream is reminded, where our topic is, does, does multiplayer or single player need to be tacked into a game? Um, and I, I just... Here's another... Like, I, I see, another I see what you're, what I you're saying, it. Mike. Yeah. But again, none of the previous Battlefronts have been like that. True, but this isn't really like a sequel. This is a this is a reimagining of the series. It's a whole new entry. It's reinvigorating but, the franchise. I also don't but that's not what people are going to go into and this game I, for. Let me add one thing as a technical correction to what James said when he introduced the topic. The game technically can be single player. You can yeah. play with they've ad, they've added bots, they confirm that. So you can play it by yourself now. So it, it's nice. literally that's going to be no there. different than the previous Battlefront games. God, I'm so lonely. That's probably how I'm going to end up playing it, unless I have enough people playing it that are friends. Because I don't go online and play random people, typically. Come on, Mike. I'm your friend. So yeah, I, but I, I think I'm Battlefront for like the time. Like By the time I get Battlefront, which is probably not going to be when it launches, because I still don't have a PS4, are you going to be playing it six months after it comes out? I am absolutely certain that if I have someone to play it with, that I will continue playing Battlefront. I played the original Battlefronts for years. Well, we, yeah. we definitely didn't play Destiny for that long. Don't don't because <laughs> it hasn't been years yet. Uh, so, but here, so here's another example to give as far as um, should you put in multiplayer or single player if that's not the main focus is um, Bioshock. Yeah. Bioshock One. 
Uh, I remember it was probably about a year before it came out when they announced that it will not have multiplayer in it. And back then, like at that time, it was like 2007, I think, it was very big. People were like, what? Like, why what, not? Why not? And it was just like, we feel like it would take away from us working and making a great single story, single player, uh, you know, experience. And, you know, if I think that Bioshock 1 was anything less of what it is as far as the story mode goes, that, yeah, it could have sucked pretty bad. Um, so I mean, it's like I think it's 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 far and few between that these the, games have a great multiplayer and a great single player. With the Bioshock, also, you could actually say every Bioshock game that has had multiplayer has sucked, and every Bioshock game that did not have multiplayer was awesome. So we're two oh. for one, or two 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 out of three. Two out of three. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. They, I mean, that's they because Bioshock Two was made by a different company who just sucked. Yeah, which is always another factor to consider too. Whether one component is made by another company or the game well, itself, which is which is why, to me, when you look at the track record, specifically going back to this the, the game we're talking about here, I think it's a good thing they don't have the single player because they have a proven track record of great multiplayer, and the last well, their their track record on storyline is either bad jokes or like cheat like. You know, like potty yeah. humor jokes, which is fine, yeah. but great for a war movie, but not for Star Wars, or a really weird, nonsensical storyline. So right. I'm good with them leaving it out because it's not what they do. Right. Yeah. Like, think about As the last company. time, like the last time a good Battlefield game that came out with good multiplayer and good single player was Bad Company 2. That's what started yeah. the trend that is modern warfare now and Battlefield yeah. now today. That's what started it. Yeah. Think back to uh, Goldeneye on the N64. Like you have good memories of playing multiplayer and single player. Think about the Uncharted games, two, two and three. You've got great Halo. single player, great multiplayer. Halo, great single player. Like, like exactly. the, the the reason that you, like, you might want to say it's good to have both is because you have these ideas, like the memories of these great, great games. Like, but if there's a, a game there that has both, but you're really going to remember the one thing, you're going to get more of that example. You know, absolutely. So. With like the case in point, all of the Call of Duty games that have come out since uh, Bad Company Two and Battlefield games since then, it, like the only big notable difference has been the addition of zombie mode. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart, like, yeah, sure, you you, you enjoy single player to get better, but the multiplayer is really where it stands out because that's what it's tailored to be. If they added a storyline to Mario Kart, to Mario I don't Kart? think it would add a whole lot to it. You know. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I would say, for the most part, it's good to go with one or the other unless you're in that camp of, well, we're Bungie or we're DICE or we're Valve, whatever, yeah. you know? So let, let's, let's end this topic with a question, okay, for, for everyone. Are there any games that you wish had foregone either the story or the multiplayer to focus more on the other? Mm. Um, like for for example for me um, the more that I have played it the more I wish they that Bungie might have tried I mean they, they already did a very very minimal work on the story but rather than throw out this crappy story give us a game that is that was like a focus on the raids and the multiplayer. And wait to put the story in. Mm. Like, I, I feel like that would have been a lot better for Destiny. It might not have made people happy, but I think in hindsight, people would be less upset about the current state of the story. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Although, did you see it the does. recent stuff, right? Oh, I, I, I have, absolutely. And it, okay. I, I feel like the direction they're going is the direction that they should that that should have been gone to in the first place. Um, but th this has been their marketing plan the whole time. No, I, I, I realize that. You know, so. Um, hmm. But so, like, uh, are there any games that you can think of? Hmm. I really want to say yes, but I can't think of any. Yeah, I'm... I'm... I guess I like, have one more to, example, actually. One, one example I could use would be um, Counter-Strike uh, 
condition zero. Um, it's the same Counter Strike except that there was a single player kind of option, and it just it didn't it didn't work well. Gotcha. You know, it's like that's like that's a game that knew what it was. Don't try to change it up because it's just it's not going to work. You know, so if, it, it, it just say figure out what you want your game to be, and if you okay. want to try to be ambitious, don't like, I don't say discourage you, but know what your game wants to be. Yeah, I've got one for you. All right, Madden. <laughs> 2015. You wish Madden had no, more of a story? No, they added a mode where you're like a general manager mode that has like a story oh. and stuff happened and it, it was horrible. A, like they didn't need RPG to do it. It game. didn't need to be done. There was no reason to put it in there, but they did it. And they well, released I mean, it. Maybe never. they wanted to try to be like, we'll retire making the same game every year. Let's try something new. Yeah. Well, no. which, which one was that? Was that one of the last ones on the last gen cycle? It was this one, the one on this gen. Yeah. Oh, the current one. Okay, well. Yeah, the so, current then, that, then that makes no sense because they yeah, had they added like a manager mode and it had story and stuff. It wasn't like great. That was the point. It was it was but just they, kind of like, like you didn't even play the do. game. You literally just like were like I need to add some money to my stadium. Let me build some seats and let me do some stuff. It, there was nothing. What they yeah. tried to do was they tried to do the MLB the show thing, which it works really well. Um for ML the MLB game because it's I don't even I, like I don't even know how to how to describe it. Um, it 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 fit with the game. Mm-hmm. You know, does does anyone not? Here's something that's interesting to think about, about is games? earlier we were talking about how sports games never change, and now we're shitting on one because they tried something new. <laughs> I'm fine with the sports games. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I was just giving an example of something that I thought they should not. Sure. Have done. Yeah. No. It was a. It's a good. Good thing to talk about. I do think the best example, though, would be Mass Effect Three. Um, oh. You know, they they added yeah. in that multiplayer element, and I mean, like I, I enjoyed playing it, but it's like in order to get the perfect ending, you had to play a lot of it. Oh, it's true. Um, and then on top of that, it's like the perfect ending well, wasn't even perfect. You know, great. Yeah. Uh, don't get because... us. Don't get us started talking about that. We'll be here all night. Yeah. Um, I hate anything that requires multiplayer as part of it. Like, yeah. for instance, um, Assassin's Creed, um, Brotherhood, Revelations, and and then also, um, not it does it doesn't require it to be part of the game. It requires that to get a platinum trophy. So like. In those games, oh, right. it was really, uh, really annoying. Yeah. Or like, win. um, my my big example is always Street Fighter. If you try, there there are four versions of Street Fighter Four on PS3. All of them oh, have there's their another own mystery sets. franchise, by the way. Yeah. Yes and no. How many times can you re? How many times can you re-release Street Fighter Four? Seriously? Oh, they actually have. But you don't have to buy Street Fighter Five. You, Street like, Fighter Five won't be doing that. Gonna... You know, no, Street yeah, Fighter Five looks pretty better. awesome. Um, but Street Fighter, Sorry. as an example. Is um, there's four versions of it, each one with its own trophy set, all the way back to the first one, the original Street Fighter Four. Lots, of, a lot of those trophies are multiplayer based. I hate fighting game trophies. Good luck trying to find people to fight to get those trophies. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like they're just lost forever. You'll never platinum that game. Yeah, I remember when uh, Gears of War came out, and there are certain achievements on there that was like get 500 headshots with the sniper rifle in. Uh, in multiplayer mode, Jesus it's just Christ. like it's like it's like play 500 matches, and it's like literally it's 500 games. I'm like, I remember Ben was so pissed because Ben loves has always loved his achievements. I I, I do, and <laughs> he's an achievement whore. I, yeah. I I am. I'm I'm an achievement whore. I'm a trophy whore. I'm, I, I don't I don't even care. I'm not even ashamed about it. Um, my issue with as long the, as you do it safely, Ben. Yeah, yeah. The the Use issue protection. I, like specifically with Gears of War, I. I didn't like the... I, again, I know I'm in minority. I hated the multiplayer in that game. I wasn't a big fan of it. Because like I, I started playing multiplayer... I so much. When I beat the game, after a week, other people were playing multiplayer, and they're godlike at multiplayer. So it's like, this yeah. isn't fun. You get stomped every time. Literally. Um, so it just it just wasn't, wasn't my thing. Yeah. Sure. Um, so is that, is that all we have to say about story and video games? Yeah, I think we've all made our points. Mm-hmm. Mike thinks you should focus. Chris is more 
open to doing both. I think you should know what you want to do. I'm a middle ground. Ben, I have no idea what you think, but I, I think they, they should know what they're trying to do. So I'm I'm with I'm with you, James. Um, but with with exceptions like like The Last of Us, it's like but they that. they knew what they were doing though. They knew what they wanted to be. It was both, and they were awesome at it. Um. So, all right, let's move on to the final topic of the evening, and that is my topic. Um, I, like I said, I've been playing a lot of Borderlands 2. And, you know, I, I started realizing that one of my favorite characters in video games, period, has got to be Handsome Jack. Yeah. Um, and he is just such a perfect villain. It's like he, he's the villain, he thinks he's the good guy. And he continues on, th- like calling, even calling himself the hero of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like completely mad, out of, out of his mind character. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to know what you guys thought. Like some of the, the best video game villains are. Um, and like, what, what do you think makes a good video game villain? Um, and then I'll, I'll, I have a, a little question for everyone at, at the end of the topic. My favorite video game villain has to be uh, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, I knew Mike would agree with you on that one. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Um, without trying to be too much, you know, trying to be spoilers, because I would hate to It's Final it. Fantasy VI. Just talk about it, James. <laughs> Fine. Um, I mean, it, 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 you don't know that he's the main villain until like halfway through the game um you see him as like the right hand man to like the big evil empire emperor sort of thing um you know before he betrays the emperor and like basically destroys everything um and what makes him such a great villain is not only does he like achieve his goal of being evil but he does it in such a dark and twisted way where you're just like you'd be like i'd be afraid to meet this guy in real life because he's just literally insane and mm. games that there are games that do that and do and do that pretty poorly um like the psychopaths in borderlands like yeah, i'm not really afraid of them in the sense of like i'm used to being this guy with this big awesome gun in my hand yeah. but like as a as the characters in Final fantasy 6 it's like there's reason to be afraid because like he just runs around and kills people willy-nilly and he's got like a great evil laugh which is awesome for super Nintendo. they have an evil laugh like that in the, in the game um you know it's just like i feel like great villains can fall into like one of the few categories either being like legitimately terrifying and insane uh another good example of that would be like andrew ryan and bioshock or um what's the what's the other what's the other villain in that game what's his name fontaine i think it is Mm. yeah um like they're great villains for different reasons and then you have guys like um like handsome jack where they add this level of humanity to them where they believe that they're their own like everyone's the hero of their own story is kind of like a, st- a, a story writing mechanic that you use when you make a villain sort of thing uh and if you can really follow true with that it makes for great great storylines and great villains especially in video games because there's no very whole ways to make them come to life yeah villains yeah yeah so that's my favorite yeah uh, absolutely I, I agree. How about you, how about you, Mike? 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 Oh man, um, Kafka is definitely a really good pick. Um, I'm yeah. I'm partial to Sephiroth. Um, <laughs> Seven's my favorite game, and a lot of people misrepresent Sephiroth a lot because they don't. It's hard to understand the story really well just by playing it because the translation is so bad and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, Sephiroth is a very like you watch Sephiroth and you get these flashbacks and stuff where you get to meet the him before the game happens. And he's just like a normal guy. He's a soldier. And then you watch him descend into the madness as he learns about his origins and stuff. And he just goes crazy and starts destroying towns and stuff. And starts talking about his mother like she's a thing when it's really just him being insane. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just fantastic. I really love... He's one of my favorite characters in the game just because of the way they tell the story with him. Mm-hmm. Um very much looking forward to the remake. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And seeing the story done right. Yes, 
I can't wait. I might, I might actually play it if. Uh, with I think you will show. because they'll be, they'll be changing the the gameplay and the battle system too. Yeah, something you'll probably modern. I think more. you'll enjoy it. No way. Um, Chris, how about you? Oh yeah, go. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you you weren't done? With <laughs> no, you're good. Sephiroth. I'll stick with Sephiroth. <laughs> okay. I love Sephiroth. But you can't. You, you don't use Sephiroth and then not have him be your guy because that's who my guy was up until two seconds oh, ago before you said Sephiroth. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I'm like, I'm like, ugh. Um, you guys have said most of like, it, it's kind of funny that Final Fantasy is like the home for the good villain, but um, they're the at least the old ones. Um, for me Which though. That's the writing was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sephiroth was who I was going to say. Um, again, the backstory and everything. Um, I guess um, kind of flipping things around. Um, the um, you eh, can do this Ganon. Fight. Pretty good Ganon. bad guy. Ganon. Ganon? Classic. Yeah. From Zelda. Oh. Yeah. Pretty good bad guy. Gives you a reason to smash all the pots, mm. attack the chickens. <laughs> um, no, no. Honestly, I mean, Sephiroth was really who I was going with. Um, it stuck out in my head for my entire childhood, and I'm just going to stick with it because sure. it's the only thing I had prepared. Um, it serves two points. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll throw somebody new out there. Um, when okay. You're done. Oh, okay, because uh, I'm like, you know, he stuck with you. You know, he, he, I played it during that, like, that... It's that time of your life, like I guess the timing of it was right, where yeah, it became totally. that. I remember vividly playing Final Fantasy VII and wanting to know more about the character and finding out more about him and doing research on the old internet to try to find out more <laughs> stories about him. And I was like intrigued by him. Um, I can't draw, but I tried to draw him, and it was horrible. <laughs> um, you but, can tell you know, that's the long sword, and that's it. Yeah, it was it was a great it was a great villain. Um, so I know we've already said enough, but you said you had somebody else to add in. Yeah, I don't know his name, uh, but the villain from Far Cry Three. Oh, oh uh, yeah, Voss. Va yeah, something Vass? like that. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, he's insane. a good crazy. There, there's but a lot like, of good over the top kind of villains like that. Yeah. Okay, I have one more best villain of all time. I'm going to call it right now. Randall the Vandal. Enough said. Who? Randall the Vandal, James. Yeah. From if, from, I, or, from I know who he is. It's, I'm just, I don't know. I like uh, what's the what's the the guy with what's the he from? <laughs> um, he, he's he's the Vandal in Destiny, James. Oh, the God. one in the, in the Cosmodrome that uh, if it you wait his spawn time, it just keeps. He just keeps getting stronger and stronger, and you can't kill him. <laughs> okay. Great. You know what? No. The joke would have been funny if if, if people could play Destiny. If not people on this they had played, played bad games. Yeah. Hey, bad not even good. It's a good game. Um, it is now. So, then I thought it might be fun. Uh, and and I, I kind of I gave you this question ahead of time so you wouldn't be put so on the spot. Mm. To kind of pair up and compare each member of the round table to a villain in a video game. So I'm hoping that you guys kind of uh, thought about it for a little bit. And since since Chris doesn't know Mike and James as well, I figured Chris and I would pair up, and then Mike and James could pair up since they know each other a little better than I know Mike. So Mike and James, huh. if you were to compare each other to a villain in a video game, who would it be? Bowser. Bowser? I, huh. Yeah. Mike That's interesting. Bowser. Yeah, I'd say Mike, Mike's kind of got a Bowser feel to him. Let, 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 let's, let's hear the reasoning here. Oh, uh, he's just got... I could just see him in a really cool like turtle shell with spikes. Yeah, he could pull off that look. I, I feel like if somebody so, took his girl away... So more away, like a, like a Dennis Hopper sure. Bowser? <laughs> Oh gosh, no! I wouldn't do that <laughs> to you. Um, I don't know. I just feel like he'd be the kind of guy to be misunderstood, and that he just wants to, you know, be with the woman that he cares about. And you've got this middle class worker just screwing his life over. <laughs> oh, that that actually that actually was kind of turns out kind of cute. 
Good job, James. <laughs> Bowser's misunderstood, man. He just he just cares about the princess. And hey, you know she wants to be kidnapped. She's all about this whole drama thing. She's playing them both. Oh, she lets it happen just over and over again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I actually had some trouble trying to come up with something. And one that I was toying with for a while was Wheatley from Portal 2. Oh, man. Wheatley's a great... We end That's what I, I was considering that. But then I decided to go with Dracula. <laughs> then you called me Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> then, I, then I found and reminded myself of Dracula from Castlevania. And I mm-hmm. thought that was... For some reason, that struck me as, as a perfect pick. Um... Specifically, I, I'm a fan of Symphony of the Night, mainly. Mm-hmm. And that Dracula... Um, granted, you don't get to spend a lot of time with him in the game, because he's only in the very beginning and then the very end. Yeah, But, uh, I don't know, it's just the look and the sophistication. And he drinks wine from his goblet sitting on his throne, and he doesn't care about throwing it on the ground when talking yeah, about no. men and souls. I, uh, I appreciate that you went with the uh, classic... You know, Prince of Evil, and not the idiot in a, who's a ball, <laughs> as as lovable and stupidly evil as. Um, well, let, let, let's be honest. Which one is James really like? Come on. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Um, Chris, do do you want me to go first, or do you want to go first? You're gonna have to go first because every villain first. I've thought of, they just mentioned. Yeah. So I'm 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 aggravated because they keep poor using, Chris. I need to go first. This yeah, this is this is getting this is getting silly. This so. is this is you being a villain, Ben. I see now. So now <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. I'm trying to place it now. You're so more ingenious than I thought. He was gonna call you Wheatley. Yeah, probably. He was probably gonna call me Wheatley. Or Gladys. Nope. Well No. Maybe. Maybe. Um so I kind of I kind of went with a, a kind of obscure answer here, and my answer is that that Chris is blue from Pokemon Red and Blue. Okay, that's, because that's you the, that's the main character. No, no, blue is the rival. Red is the main character. If you're playing red, if you're playing blue, you name yourself. Okay, blue. fair enough. That's fair. Yeah, the rival. The rival. The rival. Blue is the villain that I, I view view Chris as. And that's because every video game that Chris and I have played together, I feel like we are constantly in this battle to be better than the other person in that game. Would you say you need to be the very best? That no one, <laughs> that ever, no was? one ever was. <laughs> um, Smell but, you later. <laughs> exactly. And it's... Like, when Chris and I play video games, we even have that kind of shitty banter. <laughs> uh, just, like, constantly insulting each other when other people are around. But then, when it's just him and I playing a game, we're like the most civilized people sipping a yep. cup of tea and a smoking jacket <laughs> yeah. and a cigar and a monocle. Uh, right. Um, no, after you, good sir. No, after yeah, you. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You, <laughs> you please take the heavy <laughs> ammo first. <clears throat> um, oh, when we're near each other, yeah. Pure snark. I got you. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the route I went for you, Chris. Okay. So originally, and I'm going I'm to stick with my original, um, it's Bowser. Um, and this is why. Um, it's actually funny because it's, it's pretty similar. Um, you see, you've got Mario, got the princess, everything's good. And Bowser, we, we all agree, was a misunderstood villain. Um, but he's also tenacious despite it no matter how many times you hit him in the head with a hammer he keeps coming back and capturing the princess he doesn't know why he's doing it he just keeps doing it over and over again he doesn't really get his you know his bearings right all the time but when he does and, and mario keeps going after him and you can imagine by now after so many games and so many times fighting that the two of them are just hanging out relaxing having a good time together Going, oh, did we really used to fight each other all the time? Yep. <laughs> I don't know what the hell we were thinking either. And that's one. <laughs> so I, I think uh, all in all, some some pretty some pretty good answers. Um, I did all Dracula. What? You're you're Dracula? Is this, yeah. is that all all you all you are thinking of? 
That's what he learned in this episode. Is that he is Dracula. I want wine and a throne. Okay. <laughs> um, James. Yes. I, uh, I, I, I kind of went an extra step further oh, for gosh. this episode. You and I have known each other for a long time. As a matter of fact, you are quite literally my oldest friend. Oh. So, I decided. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> that it would be incredibly fitting for me to to come up with a villain that I thought you were. Okay. Okay. I don't and like where this is going. I had to think long and hard about this because I I, I needed to take a lot of things into account. Okay. First off, it's it's been a long running thing with you and I. Um, I'm a tall person. Um, you are not. <laughs> you're you're not a tall person at all, James. Uh huh. So I I had to take that into account. And then I also had to take into account I you know I I don't I don't have great facial hair. It's it's just, true. It doesn't work for me. Right. Um. But but you, James, you have. Some strong facial hair. It is growing on my face. I'm not going to say it's great. I'm just going to say it's strong. Okay? So I finally came up with the villain that you are, James, is you're, you're Dr. Robotnik. Oh. Like, you've, you've, got, you've got the facial hair, and for whatever reason, you, you, keep, you, keep, you're, you're, you continue to be friends with me. Which just makes me think of how Dr. Robotnik is incredibly stubborn and always makes his weapons out of stuff that is weak to hedgehog quills. <laughs> and I mean, like, like my, my attitude is very hedgehog quill-like. You know, it, it's kind of oh, yeah. hard to, to snuggle up to, to my attitude. So huh. somehow you, you keep going at it, but you keep going at it with, with the same stuff. And, and somehow you're, you're still around. Yeah. So I guess that means you can't get rid of me either. Th thank you for being my Dr. Robotnik, James. No problem, no problem buddy. Um and I, I think that's a I think that's a fairly good place to end the end the show tonight. Yeah. That was a that was a whopper of an episode. Yeah, yeah. that was a nice hour and a half. It was. Um thankfully, you all can catch it in uh split pieces throughout the week on YouTube. Dot com forward slash ridiculous prod. They'll also all be on the website, nkrn.org. Um, don't forget, though, this November, um, we are participating in Extra Life, we are, uh, which is a charity to raise money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. We actually have a live event happening. If you are in the Bay Area, um, come meet us at D20 Games in Alameda, California. Um, we are going to be hosting a 24-hour live stream straight out of a old not old um a classic board game card game tabletop gaming place um there will still be video games to be had and fun to be had in general um but that's going to be where the live event is and we would love to see you there we're also going to be giving away cool prizes um like a playstation one signed by the entire crew of kind at kind of funny games that's greg miller tim gettys um Colin Moriarty and uh, Nick Scarpino, uh, as well as some of the IGN Podcast Beyond folks, Andrew Goldfarb, Marty Sleva, um, and uh, Alfredo Diaz, uh, all of which signed on the PS1. Um, we have a campaign going on uh, because with that, we were thinking it would be fun to give a game away with that perfectly working PlayStation 1. comes with a controller, all the cables, just doesn't come with a game so if you want you can put in your vote for what game you think should come with that um, by tweeting at be ridiculous b-r-i-d-d-i-c-k-u-l-o-u-s on twitter um and yeah that the way to to win that is every five dollars you donate i put your name into a hat and uh the night of the event which is november 7th um i will be pulling a random name out of the hat and i will be shipping the playstation to you um, Mike, where can people find you on the internet? Hello? 
Did I lose he's, everyone? No, he's muted. Are you there? Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm here. Uh, All right. You can find me at rightcontempt.com or rightcontempt on YouTube. Cool. Cool, cool. Yes. And uh, you can also find him on Twitter. Oh, yes, at, and on Twitter, too. At, at Mike V. Mike V. M-A-I-K-V. There you go. James, where can people find you? You can only find me on the Twitter. That's okay. And that's at Ser underscore Capelli. How, how, how do you spell Ser? I, S-E-R. Ser. Ser Capelli. Not Sir. Not Sars. Ser. Well, you did just come from Korea, so I, I would understand why the Sars thing would be confusing. That, that's fair. That's fair. Chris, how about you? Where can people find you on the interwebs? Um, at C Bonani. It's B-U-O-N-A-N-N-I. Awesome. And you can always find me on Twitter at Be Ridiculous. You can follow the show at Nerdy underscore Nights. Uh, make sure to check out everything on the website, nkrn.org. And remember, we are live on Twitch every Monday evening, 7.30 Pacific Time. Um, and uh, we are then on iTunes the following Friday. Um, if you do subscribe on iTunes, please... Leave us a review. Leave us some comments on the on the website. Uh, let us know what you like, what you don't like. And uh, that's pretty much it. Guys, it has been another nerdy night. And I cannot wait to see you until next week. Have a good one, guys. And uh, 